In this video, I am going to discuss with you details of how to sketch a curve for a given function. Now that's a huge topic and I am limiting myself to just half a page and that's the reason we will actually cover this topic in three videos. The very first one which is this one uh, will do the major part of it. In the other two we will discuss about point of inflection and an example. Now let's start with a function which is exponential function y equals to e to the power of minus x square. Now whenever you get a function to graph or sketch or curve or, or draw a curve of a function it's kind of important to first understand the function itself. Now the function is exponential. Normally exponential functions are always increasing and they, are, they have characteristics of a horizontal asymptote. Now e to the power of minus x square. Now since we have an exponent which is square, it shows that the function becomes an even function, right? So it's a very typical function and that's the reason why we have taken it up. So let's start with the domain itself. So what is the domain of this function? There are no restrictions to the x value, correct? So the domain is x belongs to real numbers. So that's the domain there are no restrictions. Now we can look into intercepts. Will it have any x-intercepts? It won't have any x-intercepts since this is an exponential function and as x approaches infinity the function may approach zero, right? It will approach zero but it will never be zero. So it will never have an x-intercept. So as far as x-intercepts are concerned we won't have but we'll definitely have y-intercept. So we have y-intercept for this. So the y-intercept is at x equals to 0. Let's plug in 0 and then see what is the value of y-intercept. So for y-intercept, you have to just plug in 0. We say f of 0 is equal to what? So if I write e to the power of 0, what do I get? Anything to the power of 0 is just 1. So the y-intercept is 0, 1. So that's a very important point to consider. Now it does not have any x-intercept as I said but it does have a horizontal asymptote. So as so we can consider the end behavior right. So end behavior is as x approaches plus infinity or minus infinity. Now this is an even function which we'll also discuss as x approaches plus or minus infinity we'll see that the exponent really approaches a very large but with negative so e approaches e is negative do you understand so negative very high power right so it approaches a large value it is e to the power minus x square which is kind of 1 over e to the power of x square right you look at it like this that minus here makes it like 1 over that function. Now if x is very very large, right, in that case the function actually approaches 0, right, and therefore we have a horizontal asymptote, right, that gives a horizontal asymptote and the equation for horizontal asymptote is y equals to 0. So that's the horizontal asymptote for this function. Uh, another characteristics of this function is about the symmetry. It has even symmetry. Why even symmetry? Can you tell me? If you remember, what is even symmetry? Even symmetry is that when we plug in a minus x value, then you'll find that the function value is f of x. Since if I write x as minus x, right, let me substitute this and show you. If I write e to the power of minus, and if I write this x as minus, square of that will be positive right so we again get the same function which is this so f of minus x is actually equals to the same as f of x and therefore it's an even function now when it is an even function what we can do is we can only analyze one part of the graph right that means we know it has got zero uh, I mean the y intercept at zero one and symmetric about the y axis so we can consider just the right side of the graph that means where x is greater than or equal to 0 and then draw the symmetric graph on the other side. So that is also one of the approaches which we can take. 
correct so so we know these basic things about the function and that's quite a bit of it now let's figure out in which interval is the function increasing or decreasing so for finding increasing or decreasing intervals we can find the first derivative so now we'll consider increasing or decreasing intervals right that is rate of change if the rate of change is positive in that case the function is increasing and the interval in which rate of change is negative in that interval the function is decreasing so we have y equals to e to the power of minus x square so what is y dash equals to y dash will be e to the power of minus x square the same function times the derivative of the exponent which is minus 2x so this could be written as minus 2x e to the power of minus x square now as you can see in this function it is going to be 0 only for x equals to 0 right the derivative y dash equals to 0 at x equals to 0 and therefore we have a critical number here so what is a critical number so critical number let me put it in red and then we'll because it will be required later also so the critical number here is x equals to 0 right if x equals to 0 then y dash is 0 is at x equals to 0 so at x equals to 0 we have a horizontal slope now we we need to figure out what happens if x is less than 0 and what happens when x is greater than 0 as far as y dash x is concerned right so let's figure that out now in this particular case now let's say this is our line and we are considering a point here which is x is equal to 0 now y dash as you can see is equals to minus 2x e to the power of minus x square now this half e to the power of minus x square is always positive correct now if we have a test value of x which is on left side let us say negative value if x is negative then negative and negative will be positive so we'll have positive here correct so during this interval that is from minus infinity to 0 f dash x or y dash is going to be positive correct but if I put a positive value for x in that case minus 2 when multiplied by it will make it negative and so we'll have negative value correct that indicates that we have a maximum at x equals to 0 right so maximum at x equals to 0 and we already know at x equals to 0 the point is 0 and 1 so that is our value at 0 the maximum value of the function is 1 and minimum value we know is approaching 0 correct and the function is even always positive now from that we can actually write the range of the function correct so let me add here now range so earlier I purposely didn't go there since we have now found the maximum and we know the minimum that it is approaching 0 from the positive side we can write range as y belongs to real numbers so that y is greater than 0 and less than equal to 1 correct so that's the range for our function so we know domain range and behavior symmetry increasing and decreasing now we're left with the point of inflection and that we get from the second derivative correct so let's find the second derivative and figure out the point of inflection now y dash is e to the power of minus x square times minus 2x so y double dash will be the second derivative of this so we can use the product rule so we have derivative let's say consider this as the first function then minus 2x derivative is minus 2 so we get minus 2 times e to the power of minus x square, right? Plus derivative of the second function times this. So let's write this first, minus 2x. Now derivative of e to the power of minus x square will be e to the power of minus x square times derivative of exponent, which is minus 2x. So that is our second derivative. 
Now what we can do is we can factor this term which is minus 2 e to the power of minus x square. And when you factor this out you get 1 here and see what we factored out. We factored out minus 2 we factor, let us say we factor this minus 2 and e to the power of minus x squared, correct? So we are left with minus 2x, right? And x. So that means we are left with minus 2x squared. So we'll write minus 2x squared here. So that is what we get. Now, y double dash is this. Now the first term, minus 2 e to the power of minus x squared, is always negative, right? Now the second term, it is never zero, that is what I'm trying to say, but the second term will be zero. So for critical point, now for critical number, that is, we are trying to say y double dash equals to zero. So if I put y double dash equals to zero, then what happens? Then that is only possible when x squared is plus minus square root two, one over square root two, right? So let's solve this. So we have this function equal to 0, right? So when this function is 0, then only this y double dash will be 0. That is 1 minus 2x square equals to 0. Now that is possible at x equals 2 will take less, so it will be 1 over 2 square root plus and minus, correct? Okay? So at x equals to plus minus 1 over square root 2, we have y double dash as 0. So that is a possibility of point of inflection. So we can have two point of inflections in this case, right? So our critical number is at x equals to plus minus one over square root two. Now let's try to analyze the concavity at these points for this given function. So we'll do it here again. What we have here is y double dash y double dash which is this function minus 2 e to the power of minus x square times 1 minus 2 x to the power of 2 right now and the two critical points which we need to analyze are minus 1 over square root 2 and plus 1 over square root 2 right now let us see what is the concavity on either side of this function now to check the concavity, we can have a value of 0 as said, right? If I have a test value of 0, then what happens? If this is 0, I get minus 2e to the power of this is 0. So that is 1, right? So we get minus 2 times 1. So it's a negative number, correct? So during this interval, we get a negative number. So we have negative for 0, correct? So negative means what? Negative means that it is going to be concave down, right? So it's going to be concave down. So that is how our function is going to be between minus 1 over square root 2 and plus 1 over square root 2. Now if I take a value which is more than 1 over square root 2, let us say that the value is 1. So let me take a test value of 1 here. Now in that case what happens? 1 square is 1. 2 times 1, so this becomes negative. And when you multiply negative with negative, you get positive. So what you get is actually a positive value. Now from symmetry, if you take minus 1, minus 1 also square will be plus 1, correct? So you again get positive here. So in the other two sides, that means the interval between minus infinity to 1 over square root 2 minus, we have positive second derivative. That means the nature of the curve is concave up. And here also it is concave up. Do you see that? Now that shows very clearly that we have point of inflection right there. Right? So this, these two points are basically our point of inflections. Correct? So these are point of inflection. So we got point of inflection as at 1 over square root 2 plus and minus. We have a maximum at x equals to 0, right? And now we can actually draw a graph. Now what I'm going to do here is, since I'm running out of space, I will draw the graph right here in the middle of all this, right? So the graph basically will look like this. 
So we have point of inflection and the nature of graph is kind of. We are approaching. See, let's go through all this. Domain is all real numbers. X intercept is not there at all. Y intercept is there. And that is also the maximum. End behavior is approaching infinity. So it's, we, are, we have to approach infinity from both the sides. And then even symmetry increasing. So it is increasing as it is going up. It is increasing, right? Do you see it's increasing up to zero? And then we have point of inflection and maximum at zero. So with all these details, a very good graph could be kind of like this. So we kind of like this, right? So it increases like this. And here we have a point of inflection. That means the concavity changes, correct? So the graph becomes kind of like this. And at this point also, when as we approach minus 1 over 2, I mean plus 1 over square root 2, the concavity has to change, right? And we'll again approach 0, kind of like this, right? So that is, that is the graph for us. And of course, we have the y-intercept right in the center with, where x is equal to 0. So that is our y-axis. So I just squeezed it in since I was running out of space. But I hope it is kind of visible and you can understand what we are trying to do, right? So that is our graph. And this point is 1 for us. Do you see that? And this point is the point of inflection at x equals to 1 over square root 2. You can always find the value of this point. And let's do that. So what we'll do is we'll plug in. So we have space here. So what I will do is let me use a different thing so that. So if I put f, find the value at plus minus 1 over square root 2 for x, what do I get? So in this particular function, if I do 1 over 2 square root and square it, then it becomes what? Correct? x is 1 over 2. The square of this will be half. So what we get is e to the power of minus half, right? So the value of this, as you calculate, is 1 over square root e. So that is the y value, correct? So what I can do now is write down these points. So this point basically is 1 over square root 2 and 1 over e square root, correct? That is my point of inflection on the right side and on the left side it is minus 1 over square root 2 and e is 1 over square root e. So that is the point of inflection on the left side. And you can see it's absolutely symmetric graph. So that's how we can get it, right? So what I've done is this part of Finding point of inflection, I've used alternate method of doing so. Here, this is a very beautiful and probably the best way of doing it. But I've used in the alternate method and then that's the next video which you should watch. Just to understand how to find point of inflection uh, without, I mean with a, with a separate angle, right? And then we have a very good example based on this function. Go through all the three videos and I hope that will give you Good understanding of exponential function, one part. Second, curve sketching. I hope that you have learned a lot from this and it will help you to sketch any function for that matter. Remember, you have to consider all these points, all these points when you are considering sketching graph, right? Domain and range, intercepts, end behavior, even symmetry, increasing, decreasing, point of inflection, range and then final sketch. I hope you like it and I hope you really enjoyed this video. Thanks a lot.